Hi, welcome to PKS classes. Today we will study drugs acting on ganglion and or ganglia. Plural is ganglia, singular is gang ganglion. And ganglion is the mass of cell bodies outside CNS. And so from CNS, one neuron goes to ganglion. Then from ganglion, one goes to the periphery. So in, if it is sympathetic ganglia, ganglia, it is near to CNS and if it is parasympathetic ganglia, it is away from CNS. Here this ratio can be, so preganglionic nerve fiber to postganglionic nerve fiber ratio is 1 is to 20 to 1 is to 100. Here it is 1 is to 1 to 1 is to 2. So this ganglion is a mass of cell body, so many neurons go to different places from this place. So this ganglion um, can be stimulated, can be blocked also and here the neurotransmitter is acetylcholine whether it is sympathetic or parasympathetic. This is a sympathetic ganglion because it is near to the CNS and uh, this is a parasympathetic ganglion, parasympathetic ganglion. So this is and in both the cases the neurotransmitter is acetylcholine. So acetylcholine uh, has to be I mean uh, controlled here and acetylcholine here the receptor on the ganglion is NN receptor nicotinic neuronal receptor and nicotinic neuronal receptor is an ion channel link receptor link to cation channels so nicotinic neuronal receptor and acetylcholine binds to this nicotinic neuronal receptor to open these cation channels which cause depolarization okay and um, the other agonist here uh, based on whom this name nicotinic receptor is there, uh, this is also nicotine. So this can be acetylcholine or nicotine. But nicotine, the action is uh, nicotine first binds and binds because of that depolation occurs. Okay. And uh, ganglion is stimulated, but nicotine remains binding there and because of that, so there will be stimulation of ganglion uh, due to depolarization, then there will be depression due to depolarization block. So the nicotine causes depolarization followed by depolarization block. What is that? Because of depolarization block, another binding cannot occur. So another impulse cannot again stimulate this ganglion. Uh, because of this depolation block. So, initial depolation or st stimulation followed by depression. This is a characteristic feature of nicotine. So, the stimulants, we can classify them um, as the non-selective muscarinic agonists like uh, we have already studied acetylcholine, directly acting and indirectly acting anticholine esterases. And selective nicotinic, uh, nicotine agonists and natural nicotine is a natural alkylate, so natural alkylate is a nicotine lobely. And synthetics like dimethylphenyl piperazinium, uh, DMPP, okay, and uh, tetramethyl ammonium, TMA, they can also be used as agonists. And uh, these ganglion stimulants have no therapeutic use and they can be. Uh, used in nicotine dependence recently as an aid to smoking cessation by producing lower concentration of nicotine in blood than that due, uh, due to smoking. So in, uh, in case of nicotine dependence we can use them as uh, gum uh, orally or as transdermal patch or as nasal spray. Okay? And also we can use uh, nicotine for experiment, as experimented to tool uh, for study of nicotine toxicity, poisoning 
okay then ganglion blockers and the ganglion blockers means this uh, receptor has to be blocked so competitive blockers competitive nicotine uh, neuronal receptor antagonist we can use okay and also uh, this nicotine as we already said that nicotine initially causes depletion followed by uh, depletion block so uh, in large dose nicotine can also block the ganglia in small dose it is uh, ganglion stimulant and in large dose it is a blocker by prolonged depletion so ganglion blockers directly acting we can say we can classify them as competitive antagonist of nicotinic neuronal receptor and it includes quaternary ammonium compounds tertiary amines secondary amines quaternary ammonium compounds like hexamethonium pentamethonium pentolinium azamethonium tetraethyl ammonium chlorisondamine pentacyanium tertiary amines like trimetaphan pempidine secondary amines like mecamelamine and by prolonged depletion also uh, ganglion can be blocked and uh, drugs like nicotine and anticholinesterase drugs in large dose can block the ganglion that is depolarization block and this uh, uh, cholinergic neurohumeral humeral transmission can also be uh, targeted to ha have indirectly acting uh, uh, drugs basically they, they will say anticholinergic action and since Mm, uh, all these drugs we can uh, we could have uh, grouped them in parasympathetics but we didn't because uh, we have sympathetic ganglion as well as parasympathetic ganglion and in both the case the acetylcholine acts as the neurotransmitter so if we will use these indirectly acting drugs uh, then they will affect both sympathetic ganglion as well as parasympathetic ganglion so they have been classified as indirectly acting ganglion blockers and here the acetylcholine is synthesized from choline and acetyl coenzyme a to acetylcholine okay and now this acetylcholine is released acetylcholine is released and degraded by acetylcholine esterase to again choline plus acetic acid and this choline is again obtaken again and becomes a source of synthesis of acetylcholine so if this is inhibited this uptake is inhibited choline uptake is inhibited then choline acid choline cannot be uh, supplied and acetylcholine synthesis is inhibited so inhibit synthesis of acetylcholine by inhibiting choline uptake in drugs like hemicholinium then this acetylcholine after uh, synthesis it is stored inside the synaptic vesicle and if we inhibit this vesicular storage so this is number 2 inhibit vesicular storage then also it is degraded there and vesamycol uh, is the drug which does this we can also inhibit this acetylcholine release okay so this is number 3 uh, uh, botulinum toxin magnesium ion aminoglycoside antibiotics all of them inhibit acetylcholine release and uh, number 4 means all these uh, all these drugs they decrease the level of acetylcholine in the synapse okay so they show anti cholinergic action and uh, in ganglion both sympathetic and parasympathetic ganglion they decrease the level of acetylcholine so they are classified as ganglion blockers then there is another group which, which induce massive release of acetylcholine and immediately cause depletion and example is black widow spider toxin okay and uh, uh, all these ganglion blockers can be used uh, means uh, mainly in case of hypertensive crisis they can be used ganglion blockers can be used in hypertensive crisis and two main phenomena they show and because of sympathetic ganglion blocks so they they block sympathetic the uh, ganglion and they also block the parasympathetic ganglion so because of sympathetic ganglion block they produce two major effects one one is postural hypotension postural hypotension 
and the second is post exercise hyper, hypo, hypotension post exercise hypotension and this these two we will uh, discuss in detail postural hypotension means on based on the posture so when we stand up we suppose we are in a sitting or uh, lying position and immediately we stand up so what will happen uh, there should be gravitational pulling of blood from head to downwards but it doesn't occur because of the reflex action what is the reflex action there is venno constriction okay there is venno constriction and because of venno constriction when we stand up there will be no gravitational pulling of blood so there will be no gravitational pulling of blood and because of that uh, the uh, because of the venno venno constriction the cardiac output will increase and the arterial pressure is maintained okay so the arterial pressure is also increased and maintained but if we give a ganglion blocker a ganglion blocker what how what it does ganglion blocker will dilate the vein uh, so it inhibit this reflex action of venno constriction when we stand up so because of venno dilatation there will be gravitational pulling of blood and Uh, the cardiac output will decrease arterial pressure will decrease and that will lead to hypotension so this because of this 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 gravitational pulling of blood will be there so gravitational pulling of blood will be there and this will lead to hypotension and since this hypotension occurs because of change in posture it is called postural hypotension and there will be fainting okay similarly we can also explain post exercise when we do the exercise uh, our skeletal muscles need more blood supply skeletal muscles blood supply uh, is increased okay and how by vasodilatation there if there will be vasodilatation then the as blood supply to skeletal muscles will increase and what happens because of the exercise there is a reflex action a reflex action venno constriction elsewhere so besides skeletal muscle in other places there will be venno constriction so that more blood will be supplied to skeletal muscle and when we use a ganglion blocker this will be inhibited so Uh, again since there will be no venno constriction in other places so that will lead to hypotension and that is called post exercise hypotension so these two things we should understand and then the other one is the parasympathetic ganglion block and parasympathetic ganglion block means all the parasympath uh, parasympatholytic action ganglion block will lead to parasympatholytic actions okay and uh, as parasympathetic lytic actions already we have uh, discussed in uh, our previous class parasympathetic lytic actions like uh, dry mouth constipation impaired micturition delirium sweating uh, your atony of bladder atony of uh, git all these things will occur because of parasympathetic ganglion block okay and uh, this can be used because of uh, sympathetic action they can be used in severe hypertension okay so uh, this is the major use of these ganglion blockers thank you